a crackdown on Central Square over usage of city power. Hello and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor, Michelle Seven. Hello and welcome to Free King TV. I'm your anchor, Michelle Seven. For the past few weeks, Central Square has played host to a couple Friday events. During the afternoon, an event is put on called Free Speech Friday in which participants can use a microphone to engage in free speech. Some choose to entertain and some seek to address community concerns. Following the event later in the evening is a similar event called Live Free or Dance. This past Friday was the third edition of Free Speech Friday and the second edition of the Dance Party. To talk about this tonight, we have Heike Corser and Jason Talley. We also have two of those that were arrested on Friday, Ryan Maddox and Free King TV's very own Derek J. Freeman. Heike, can you please take it from here? Thank you, Michelle. Um, today we have Jason Talley, Derek Freeman, and Ryan Maddox. Um, why don't we start by introducing yourselves and telling everyone a little bit about yourselves. Jason, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, I have been covering the uh, Free Speech Friday and uh, the uh, dance uh, event that follows uh, Live For Your Dance. Uh, I was actually live streaming uh, when um, these two gentlemen were arrested and so um, got to see the violence um, up close, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I, I like it. I speak at Free Speech Friday. Uh, I try to go to every single one and I try to talk about um, things that I'm concerned about with the community, um, how we can make it better, how we can work together. Um, and uh, but I also like to dance, so I go to Live for Your Dance, and I try to uh, make that every uh, every week as well. The last two weeks, uh, people have been dancing. Previous week, um, there were no problems, uh, but th this week, as we'll find out, there were some uh, arrests, and uh, unfortunately, Derek was uh, maced. Now, Derek, um, you're the one that started the dance party. Well, I, I don't know if it was any one. I certainly wasn't the first one dancing, much to my surprise. Uh, <laughs> as soon as the music came on. Um, Folks seemed to take to it. Uh, they just enjoyed it enough. The music was right, and I think it was just the right time and place to have a dance party. But there were actually people uh, that we don't even know that started the dancing, and we couldn't help but join in. Perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> and Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, uh, my name is Ryan Maddox. Uh, I moved here in 2009 for the Free State Project because I want to live in a free society uh, where people don't use coercion. Uh, where there's no arbitrary use of power. And, you know, I heard about uh, the dance party, so I came last week. It starts around 10 p.m., uh, and, you know, it was a fun event. There was no conflicts, and people just had fun. I don't see the harm in that. All right. Now, I was not there for the dance party. I was away this weekend. So, do any of you want to tell me a little bit about this? Well. I, I would like to share uh, that we got started somewhere between 10.15 and 10.30. And At night? Yes. And got just one song on and people started dancing. It was a good time. And then a uh, Keene uh, Police Department vehicle uh, pulled into the space over by Bank of America. And um, then in almost immediately after was followed by another King Police Department car which had its emergency lights on and pulled over right next to the commons. Uh, so it, it seemed like an emergency scenario and we cut the music right away. Mm -hmm. And why were they there? Uh, that's what we were all curious to know. Uh, we were asking them uh, that question and we got two different responses. One was that it was a noise complaint and um, the second was that we were using the electricity of the city uh, without permission. So we needed a permit. Now I had an opportunity to talk to uh, one of the, uh, the law enforcers, one of the ones that came up during the day, during Free Speech Friday, and we had a nice conversation. And uh, I, I explained that the people have been looking into this, especially after the, uh, the arrest of, uh, of Ryan, uh, Derek, and we should also mention that uh, Roz was arrested as well, third person. Um, been looking for an ordinance that says that uh, people can't use power. Uh, ever s it, it doesn't exist. As far as we know, if any viewer can uh, find out, uh, email me, tallytv at gmail.com. We would really like to find out. The uh, law enforcer said that he didn't know specifically what law it was, but that he was told to, um, um, that, they c that people couldn't use power from City Hall. 
So um, we'll get into a little bit about what we traveled around and did today, but um, there is going to be hopefully a disclosure of the information about the people that called. Um, if there is an ordinance, the uh, city is going to have to uh, to reveal this information. But like I said, uh, we can't find the, it. The only ordinance I know about doesn't have anything to do with the power usage, but there are uh, there is an ordinance about quiet hours. I believe it starts at 10 p.m. Well, um, talking to uh, many people that were walking to the gazebo where the music was taking place, they said they didn't think anything was going on because they couldn't hear anything. Uh, there were lights that were going on, but I didn't think it was very loud. I personally don't want to be involved in anything that's going to uh, annoy any, any of the businesses or any of the people that live around Central Square. Uh, um, I will be involved with it if the music is just within Central Square. Okay, very nice. Um, so I believe we're going to be watching a video in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if well, we can cut to the video, we can describe uh, exactly who complained. Um, city complained about the use of power, and the citizen complained about the lights. What do you mean the city? What do you mean the city? I have no idea. We yeah, yeah, yeah. get sent to calls. The city, you're not allowed to use the power on the gazebo. That's why. Pays here. for the power. People pay for the power. People pay people? for the power. That's right. Right. We, we, I'm not going to go through this with you guys. We are all people. The city has regulations, you have to go through the city to use the power. Let's see the story. I don't see the lights or uh, hearing music. So, uh, so he uh, was talking about um, how uh, you have to go through the city in order to uh, to use the power. I just want to remind the viewers, many of you know, there was a big music festival uh, here last week. Um, and actually there was a bands playing in that same gazebo. Um, the city of Keene was a partner in that, so they were uh, they permitted loud music, but they still received complaints uh, from residents. Um, but of course, um, they don't call the police on themselves, um, even though they're the ones responsible for the noise. But uh, we did see the city then brutally crack down the next week because um, whoever um, was dancing and playing the music um, didn't ask permission, I suppose. Have to get your jobs done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who's being shut it down? Then we're all set. Uh, who's we being hurt? Okay. Yeah, that's an important point. I don't see any lights or uh, hearing music, so uh, I think your job's done, right? Yeah. Who's being to shut it down? Then we're all set. Uh, who's being hurt? According to what? what you're you're your gun? Gun? I don't know. Clearly, yeah. he, he keeps no, going. He, he wouldn't just leave us alone. Right. He he wouldn't leave well enough alone and. You'll see uh, in the next um, upcoming seconds, he really uh, gets interested in whose equipment this is. Uh, the only thing we're certain about is that it wasn't his, since he's asking. Now, did, right. did that matter whose equipment it was? You, you shut it off, it should have been the end of it, right? Well, that was my perception, given that he was saying, just shut it down. Um, there was nothing to shut down at the point he was asking. Everything was unplugged from the gazebo except for the light that City Hall keeps on itself. Right. Speculation so. on my part, but it uh, seemed like the city wanted the equipment taken away because they didn't want it to continue, which is a shame because free speech is important and I don't see anything wrong with people dancing. Well, taken away, I mean, that's somebody's private property. Right. So that, it's not theirs, that's stealing. Right, it's theft, no doubt. Well, no. okay. you, you don't know, but you're trying to so report something you don't know about. There's lots of ordinances in the books that I don't know anything about. City, okay? So, I don't have more memorized. But you're going to go ahead and enforce something, even if you don't know if it's an ordinance? No, I know that it's an ordinance. You know that it's an ordinance. I believe that it's an ordinance. You believe that it's an ordinance. But you're not sure. Believe me, I would much rather be somewhere else. You don't trust me. Okay? Just do my job. I'm here to take care of it. And don't use the power. And you're all set. What's with the threats, guys? Don't appreciate it. People are having a good time. Who's making threats? You guys are making threats. Okay, that's good. So, you're good? That's not that you're making threats? I don't have an hour. I don't have a plug. Yeah. But they're not responsible to give them? Yeah, you don't have to provide drugs. Yeah, you don't have to provide drugs. That's why there's three young camera people today, police officers. I was live streaming there. And like Ryan, I think, alluded to earlier, that Free Speech Friday, totally peaceful event. You have members of the community coming together. Um, which a lot of people are complaining about that they want to see more of uh, in Central Square, it's happening. And it's due to the people that have started Free Speech Friday, started a place where people can um, get together, discuss community problems, make the whole community better. Um, so that happened, people were dancing um, very you know, together, people that didn't even know each other, just people that may have been walking by like to dance. Um, you know, dancing is a, a form of expression, form of speech as well. 
Um, do you think part of it could be the time of night that you do it? Again, um, if, it, if noise isn't bothering the surrounding buildings, then I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, if the noise is uh, in the park for that, and people go there to enjoy that, that's great. If it starts uh, interfering with somebody, then we need to turn it down. Um, but um, but yeah, so but the cop said that he received a, a noise ordinance, but uh, by the time he was there, it was done. I don't know. Think I don't think he even heard any music. He just mentioned something about the lights. It's got to be impossible because there was only half of a song played. Indeed. I mean, right? Oh, right. And they what, showed up. What time was song? that call placed, and how did that officer respond so quickly? We will find out because uh, the requests were put in for all these records, and we'll, we'll be able to build a timeline of when that call was made. And uh, because I was live streaming, we have a timestamp of when that music was being played. So the pieces are going to come together, but this is Monday. Um, so after this happened on Friday, so this is our first chance to get our hands on these things. Um, but I, did, I wanted to continue and, um, and just say it was totally peaceful. Uh, the dance party was peaceful. What, in, what introduced chaos into the situation was, uh, unfortunately, when the Keene Police Department uh, showed up and um, we'll, we'll watch the violence inherent in the system. Okay, can we stop it here, please? Uh, so this is where they basically start taking the violence out against uh, people at the dance party specifically. Uh, excluding the other gentleman that was arrested and you know they had no means to know who the property actually belonged to at that point uh, the officers simply took for granted uh, that someone else said that they owned it and then arrested that person several people did uh, right. including one person at least one person prior to the guy that they pinned it on I, I don't know like he received charges for the music right um, correct and um, but uh, yeah, but a bunch of people chimed in saying that it was their property. It was kind of like one of those I am Spartacus moments where you know they didn't want the cops to be there, so they were going to take the rap, I guess. That's you don't have to ask me that. I'll take it right now. You can't take you it unless you tell me who your name is. You don't, that's, that's not a law. That is not true. It's not. It's not excuse me. You do not have the right to take his property. No, I am taking that's a violation. No, sure that's not. a violation of, oath, of the oath that you swore to uphold. I'm not yelling. I'm this talking over you. This claiming that it's his property. Okay. I don't have any way to prove the one that's in the back of the police. Who's that? Oh, let's talk about this gentleman who is in the back of the police vehicle. Um, earlier in the evening, that cop pointed the guy out as being a suspect of an, of an assault. Um, but they're going to uh, take his word um, that it's his property, as opposed to the numerous people that spoke up. Um, again, it's speculation, but just from, I was there, uh, it seemed like a setup um, so that the uh, police could uh, separate the equipment from the people who were uh, in the Central Square using it. Why don't you just let me be? Because I, I can't. It's his property. What's he have to do with me and you? It's, this is his property. I'm taking his property. I'll let you play in games. Why don't you walk away? Nobody needs your services here. So I would like to uh, pause this for a moment to say that I was packing up some equipment at this point, uh, some equipment for which I was uh, taking personal responsibility. And um, I took it personally when the cop told me that I wasn't able to take my property, the stuff I was responsible for, and that I wasn't able to move past him or leave. Um, so he kept trying to um, pass the buck and say that, well, I'm just going off of the word of this you know, young kid who was involved in a scuffle earlier over you. And I could, had no choice but to take that personally um, as someone who's looking to steal from me but you have no right to take, take that it's like i mean it's against the oath that you swore to uphold they're very threatened by you guys being on me. can you back off a little bit and let me just air out a little i'm feeling threatened by your presence i know you can hear me okay sorry it was the radio this is hey. coming with us. No, uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. You have no right to take that property. No, on, on what grounds? On what grounds? 
Hey! Get arrested too. On so what ground? Can we get arrested too? On what ground? Um, I just want to ask all the parents out there, what would you tell your children to do if a stranger came up and tried to take his property? Um, what what would you tell your kid to do? I mean, it's, it's something to think about because this stranger happened to have a badge on, uh, which made it an extra difficult situation for me. But the right thing in, in my heart was to hang on to what's mine and don't let someone steal from you. Um, I, I don't agree with aggression, but y you'll see where that got me. <laughs> it's important to realize also that the badges don't grant extra rights. Uh, do we know the name of this officer? Uh, uh, cop Joe, right? Yeah, this is cop check. Okay, yeah. Stop! Hey! Stop! On what ground? Stop! On what ground? Hey! Hey! Whoa! Hey! 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 So, um, in that scene, you see uh, Rosalind being attacked by a second officer in the left corner of the screen, and it's kind of hard to make out. Uh, you don't really see the rest of what happens there, but uh, the second officer uh, grabs her from behind and starts pulling her away from the equipment that she was trying to hold on to um, because she understood that it was Derek's property. She was trying to protect it. And uh, he pulls, starts pulling her down the stairs, and I go after her, and try to get her away from him because I recognize that this person is unlawfully uh, putting his hands on her, assaulting her, and violating her rights. And uh, what happens next that you can't see in the video is that uh, we're eventually pushed down to the ground and uh, he kidnaps both of us. And I believe two other officers emerged at that point uh, to assist. Yeah, he's, he's using a force against me while I'm being a peaceful person here. And I never once flailed or uh, swung my arms or anything. In fact, I was injured that day, so my palms were uh, still bloody from uh, falling off of my bike. But he just yanked on my uh, wrists as he arrested me. I'm really happy to see the number of cameras that were around, um, and I'm really sorry what, to what happened to you guys and, and Rosalind. Um, I think it's a shame, and I don't like that uh, the, the taxes that I spend, uh, that, that they take from me in Keene, go to pay people <clears throat> employed by the police department so they can do things like this, and because because of the tax money, they do that in my name. And I don't want them to. I don't want... No, I'm just in shock just watching this. The sheer size of the officers and the amount of force that they used on you. No offense, but you're, you're little. Well, there's there's yeah. more force coming up. It's terrible. And... and is this at a point where you got maced? Um, That's no, no, what it I hasn't heard. happened yet. Hasn't happened? Okay. Yeah, uh, right now I've just been I knocked to the ground. I, I did um, earn some injuries uh, while I was knocked to the ground and uh, an officer stood on me um, while he arrested me and, uh, you know, left some marks on my body. I, I felt really bruised uh, for the next couple of days, but... I'm sure. Um, yeah, it's not a pleasant experience uh, and, and being thrown to the ground. Yeah, it's worth reminding that, uh, uh, you know, minutes before they showed up, it was a peaceful dance party. And then bring right. this man to the That's ground? Correct. That's correct. That's correct. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, more, more force ground, to from the uh, King exactly. Police Officer. This, yeah, this yeah, is the, the time where uh, Officer Kamcha is trying to reason through why he just did what he did with the surrounding people asking questions. And pointing and out that he has no idea who owns that property. Well, right. And so you see, he's surrounded by concerned members of the community, many of cameras, thankfully, who um, ask him questions and speak up. And well, they are, they are yelling at him, but I mean, I can see where they'd be angry watching this happen. Yeah. I mean, this was completely blown out of proportion. It's an outrage. Right there where he just yanked on my wrist is uh, where he thought I was still holding on to the um, equipment. I had released my hands by that point. Um, but yanking was totally unnecessary given that I had open wounds on my hands. Um, so he could have been a little more gentle than that. You have anything oh, escalated and not violent situations, but, officer, you're the one doing the violence. Yeah. You're the one who's the aggressor. What escalation? What escalation okay. happened here until you got here? This is how they use force against What, what happened? Lights. Nothing. Versus wrestle some guy to the f***ing ground. 
So I'm just trying to find out for the live stream audience here that was watching that. Another, yeah, another this is the only solution the state knows to you for the peaceful people who disobey their orders. Thank you for the service. We, we really appreciate it. You guys, thank you for, for f***ing helping our community. We really, the people love this. Thank you. Excuse me. Money is stolen for people to pay Yeah, for at this point, uh, he's feeling me up in some pretty uncomfortable places. Uh, he was not welcome to touch. So, I'm just making an announcement in that video about where he's touching me. Um, because I thought it was important to get audio of that. Love it when you use force against peaceful people. Oh yeah, you really got a bad one, thank you. Thank you. If you notice how many police cars are there, uh, I, I think there might have been eight and uh, at least ten officers. That could be um, that's just an estimate of the, the show of force. Probably their entire night shift showed up. My question is, how are they protecting and serving right there? Well, I, I brought that point up to one of the officers. I said, you're not protecting it, you're not I mean, they went down on a noise complaint. You had already shut the stuff off. End of discussion. Have a good night. Please get your lights down. You can't be using that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, again, that's again, how it the should lights, have been. There, there weren't lights on. There wasn't uh, music on when they showed up. Right. So it but, like I mean, but they had heard about it or whatever. So okay, it, it's off. Thank you, and have a good night. Is how it should have been. They just acted like bullies in a schoolyard who couldn't leave well enough alone. That's that's really. Well, I know you was. personally too, and I'm just like, how could anyone hurt you? <laughs> Derek is one of the nicest guys. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> Derek is just a gem. You well, used that earlier for someone thanks, else. Well, thanks, guys. You, you really are. Um, and, but we should point out also, uh, Ryan and Rosalind went through a lot of abuse themselves, but unfortunately yes, there's sorry. not footage of that. Um, it, we, we haven't oh, been able to find it, um, and that's unfortunate. There are so many... It, it was no, uh, louder camera. at the gazebo, and so that's where the camera is. I don't want to get in the car. For, for using an electrical no, device. Really, okay. Oh, I, yeah, they have a lot to say about this. Here, let's <laughs> definitely talk about what took place. Because you just saw the uh, strobing uh, flashlights pointed right at cameras. Well, it might not be a big deal if it was just on one camera, but it was on at least two, and we're going to review all the footage. It, it may be more, but it seemed like a, um, an effort, um, a coordinated effort, by uh, keen law enforcers to blind the cameras from um, what's about to happen to Derek. And so, just so you think they knew that they were going to do this already? Absolutely. They absolutely did. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Fortunately, we're seeing photos yeah. that were taken, so um, they couldn't conceal their violence. But, uh, Can't watch that. Uh, and we went to uh, many bureaucracies today in the city of Keene, and I discussed uh, with the uh, police chief, who was nice enough to meet with us today, uh, I asked him if it was department policy to um, shine lights and cameras, and he said that it is not uh, the policy. I did ask him a few times, but he said it was not um, police department policy to shine lights and cameras. So the question is, why did the officers do that? Is it not in their training? It's not I think a more important question, why did they mace a handcuffed man who's standing there? Well, There's two you. officers right. right there that are like at least double the size of him. He's handcuffed, standing next to a cop car, and they mace him? What the heck? That he, is what has most people outraged. He really could have easily uh, lifted me, and judging by the way he touched me earlier, he didn't have a problem with that. So I, I would imagine he'd like, be able him to being aggravated that, that you said, no, I'm not getting into the cruiser, but, I mean, again, size, handcuffs, was what? it really necessary to mace? I don't think so. That, that well, really was, upsets me. I was just very clear to him that I was communicating. I felt like I was being kidnapped. You guys just pepper sprayed a guy who was handcuffed. How did that feel? Uh, it felt like a flame was all oh. over my head for at least 24 hours. It's pretty rough. Um, but you were not maced, were you? I was not maced. Um, however, you know, it wasn't a pleasant experience uh, being, you know, harmed by the police uh, this way. You know, all we wanted to do was just have a fun night of dancing. Uh, I would have never expected this to happen. Uh, it's just a ridiculous event on its own and uh, you know I would just hope that the KPD would realize that they made a big mistake and uh, just end this nonsense and the madness. I'd like to applaud what you guys did today along with Rosalind uh, and um, Cecilia also joined us uh, to help record. I was recording. The three of you went around to the different bureaucracies in town. You've, uh, tell, us, tell us what you guys were up to. Well, uh, it was really important to me uh, to hold the men and women who 
uh, violated me to be held accountable. So I have heard about a thing called Freedom of Information Act requests, and I looked up the form and filled a dozen out and um, wanted to seek all the information relating to the case. So uh, we stopped by the King Police Department to check call logs um, because this noise complaint came awfully quick after the song started and then the cop showed up really soon too. So there are a lot of unsolved mysteries that we're hoping will be solved by these Freedom of Information Act requests. But that's not all we did. We also requested some records. Maybe you can uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Right. We went to the KPD today. Um, it was actually our last trip uh, and we obtained some motions for uh, discovery um, that we'll fill out and submit tomorrow morning. The intention of which is to uh, d determine all the facts related to our arrest um, so we can use that information to better uh, fight to get these charges dropped. Now what exactly were the charges in the end? Uh, well against me uh, the charges were obstruction of administration and resisting arrest. Uh, Roslyn also got an additional charge of obstruction of apprehension um, and that's not clear uh, what they meant that she was uh, obstructing the apprehension hub, whether it was the equipment or an individual. But uh, what were your what was your charges, Derek? I was charged with obstructing government administration and resisting arrest. Um, but <laughs> I feel like I, you know, that was a wrongful arrest. So uh, of of course I'm going to resist it, um, though peacefully. Of course. You explained to him that you weren't comfortable getting into the police cruiser, so that constitutes as resisting arrest, even well, though they maced you? Yeah, I think it's important to always um, communicate uh, using words rather than violence, and so I was communicating with my words that I felt like I was being kidnapped and I had no desire to get into his vehicle, um, and so he maced me. And I guess we'll find out if that is department procedure to mace people um, before they're getting into the car. And so, um, but so that, that was great that uh, you guys are, are going to pursue this. Now, they do change charges around a lot of times. Many times they'll drop some charges. Hopefully they'll drop all the charges once so they they'll realize. they'll change it once they really research the law. Oh, we're going to arrest this person, yeah. but ooh, we didn't really have ground, so we're going to find something that we could use. Well, let's hope they research the law. I don't believe they researched the law before they decided to uh, descend on the, uh, the dance uh, event. We're going to... Fruity, your labor pays for this, Keen. Stay tuned at 7 p.m. for a new episode of Free Keen TV. I'm Michelle Seven saying peace be with you and yours. Nice job, chickpeas.